Today is Earth Day, April 22nd, 2020, and it's a beautiful, sunshiny day here in Crystal Lake. Today's yoga practice is really an appreciation, love, gratitude for Earth and all of the simple beauties that we have around us. And I'm also drawing uh, inspiration from Mark Nepo's The Book of Awakening. I love this book for daily inspiration and his passage for April 22nd is titled, It Is Enough. And so today our enoughness is going to come with that appreciation and gratitude for simplicity, the beauty of moving our bodies, the beauty of nature, the beauty of the ground holding us and supporting us and um, feeling really safe and secure with that grounding. So for today's practice, if you do have yoga blocks, that's awesome. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, some people don't need them. If you need extra support, maybe you could grab a folding chair or a counter or be close to a wall. Uh, if you don't have blocks, but you do like something extra underneath your hands, maybe grab a sturdy book um, that might be helpful for you. I also recommend that you have a towel or a blanket of some sort for under your head. And um, maybe if you have a yoga bolster or an extra pillow to prop up your knees, underneath your knees for Shavasana, that would be really helpful too. And that's pretty much all that you need. If you don't have a yoga mat even, you don't need a yoga mat, but it's nice to have that extra support underneath you. So having said all of those things, if you want to find a comfortable position for Shavasana, so for me, what that means is I really like to have a blanket underneath my head, but you don't need to have one. The blanket underneath my head is really just on the back of my head, but it's not touching my shoulders. So when you lay down, be purposeful about this laying down. Palms face the ceiling and your Legs are going to splay open, and you want to make sure that you have some space between your arms and your armpits, but your arms aren't wide or overhead, but the backs of your hands are resting comfortably on your mat or on the ground. And then soften everything down as much as you possibly can. Drop down and start to focus on your breathing. You can even softly close your eyes here in your Shavasana. So Shavasana translates to corpse pose. But I really want you to feel the groundedness of this pose. So starting with the backs of your feet, really feel your heels resting on the earth. Notice the backs of your legs, they're supported the buttocks, your whole back, backs of the arms, and the back of your head. And now let everything sink down even more. And if your eyes aren't already closed, let them close, but softly, and allow your eyeballs even to descend even further into their eye sockets softening the space around your mouth and relaxing your jaw. Soften the space around your eyes and your ears and be held here by Mother Earth. Gratitude and appreciation for that support underneath you and let your body take up space. Now turn your attention to your breath, noticing the rising action of the inhalation and the falling action of your exhalation. This is noticing without any effort exerted to manipulate or to change what is there. Just noticing that rise and fall, continual action.
for three more rounds of breath. Gentle inhalation, maybe taking this inhalation through the nose. And exhaling, maybe again through the nose. Noticing textures. Noticing the quality of your breath. And if you find that you're trying too hard to notice the breath, soften. Let everything fall back down to the ground. So as you're focusing on your breath, start to float this word enough. What does that mean to you, enough? And as you're cycling through inhalation, exhalation, I'll read Mark Nebo's passage for April 22nd, It Is Enough. If you can't see what you're looking for, see what's there. One of the most difficult things for us to accept is that beneath all our dreams and disappointments, we live and breathe in abundance. It is hard when in pain to believe that all we ever need is before us, around us, within us. And yet it is true. Like leafless trees waiting for morning, something as great and as constant as the earth holds us up and turns us ever so slowly toward the light. Our task is only to be rooted and patient. Mysterious as it is, no matter our pain or excitement, our drama or circumstance, all that we could hope for is here. We lack nothing. The humble challenge of being human is not in agreeing or disputing this truth. That is as fruitless as arguing against gravity. Our humble way, if we can open it, is to root ourselves beneath the thousand dreams and excuses that keep us from the ground we walk. Time and again, we are asked to outlast what we want and hope for in order to see what's there. It is enough. So I invite you now to stack your hands over your heart and feel your heart beating for you. And consider the earth that is supporting you Maybe call to mind beauty of nature. Maybe this is a special place that you like to visit. One that brings you serenity and joy. And just picture this place. And to yourself, utter the phrase, it is enough. And take a deep breath in. And exhale, let it go. And from your Shavasana, so open up your hands. And then hug your knees into your chest. This is called Apanasana. And then if you'd like to, you can add a gentle rock from side to side. your apanasana and then find some stillness allow the legs to soften allow the whole back body to soften notice if you're straining your neck let the earth support you and then hands out to the sides so palms are face down really feel them rooted down to the earth and then I'd like you to bring your legs to 90 degrees and flex your feet. So from there, you'll feel a subtle engagement of your abdominals. Notice if you're really arching your back and see if you can draw your back ribs down. So ribs are down to the mat. You're not straining in order to make that happen. So I'm not really flattening out the curvature of my spine. I'm just not overarching. 
palms are face down, legs are at 90 degrees. And then very slowly, I want you to move your knees to the right. So this is subtle. And the abs are engaged the entire time. You're moving very slow and pause. Come back up through center. Pause there. And then over to the left. So resist the urge to rock. And instead make this slow, subtle, and smooth. Pausing in the middle. And if you'd like to go further, you can. Now, if you're not engaging your abdominals and you're not engaging your inner thighs, you might feel some tweaky sensation in the low back. So if this is happening for you, press even more through the inner thigh of the leg that is closest to the ground. So for instance, I'm going over to the right. I'm engaging my inner right thigh and pressing. So it's not touching my left leg, I'm just engaging that a little bit more to create some more resistance. Inhale back up to the center and pause, and then over to the left. And after your next round, come back to center, legs are still at 90 degrees, and now we're going to open the legs, so I'm, I still have my feet flexed, open, and then crisscross, so my right leg crosses over my left, and then open. And then you can add the breath here. Inhale and exhale. So if you're holding your breath, and I'm switching the cross of my legs, so my right leg crosses over and open, left leg crosses over and open. Right, crosses over, open, and left crosses over, and open. So now slow down to half time. Like really like slow down the speed. Opening and closing, engaging inner thighs, outer thighs. And bring your knees back together and hug your knees into your chest. Maybe rock from side to side in your Avanasana. And then find some stillness here. Again, feel the earth supporting the whole back body. Let the shoulders soften, face softens. And then roll over to your right or your left side. And I want you to be slow about moving yourself to seated. So I like to press my forehead down, hands face down, and then press up without utilizing my neck in order to come up. And once you're up, if you have a towel or a mat, grab that and place it underneath your bottom. It can be a little bit elevated. If you want to sit up on a bolster, you could do that too. And this is called Sukhasana. It's an easy cross of the legs. If this is really hard for you, find something that feels doable, manageable for you. Fingertips come down to the earth or the mat beside your hips. Slight roll of the shoulders up, back, and down. And pull your rib cage back in space. So if you feel yourself really moving forward, come back and sink down into the ground and pull your sternum up towards the ceiling or the sky. The back of the skull moves up towards the ceiling as well. You can close your eyes here, shoulders away from the ears, and then inhale, reach your hands up towards the ceiling, straight elbows, bring the right hand down, lift the left arm up and reach over. The lateral body stretch, side stretch. Inhale, come up. Reach both arms up on an inhale. Keep the right arm lifted, left hand comes down. Reach even more with the right hand and take a side bend. Inhale, come on up. Reach both arms, inhale. 
And on your exhale, take a twist over to the right. This time, look over your right shoulder. If it's uh, safe movement for you, left hand comes to the outside of the right thigh. Sit up straight. Inhale, reach up. And exhale over to the left. Inhale, come back through center. And this time when you exhale, walk your hands forward to the front of your mat. So you might not go very far, and that's okay. If you want a little extra in your armpit area, tent your fingertips. So my tented fingertips look like this. I'll show you from the side. It's like a cupcake, like a clawing. Oh, can't really see that either. And then head comes down. And then walk yourself back up. So we'll do that again. Walk yourself out. And this time, walk your hands over to the right. Come back through center. And then over to the left. And back through center. Come back up. Roll your shoulders. Awesome. Then we're going to come onto our hands and our knees. So this is table pose, and I want you to post your hands down. So what does that mean? Spreading the fingers wide, pulling your thumbs, almost like they're magnetized towards each other, and pressing more weight into the pointer finger and the thumb pad than over towards the pinky. Also, my elbows are straight here, and my elbow creases are smiling at each other. So from here, I want you to press your shins down towards the mat as much as you possibly can. And cat cow, inhale, drop the belly, lift the chest. And exhale, round up. Imagine that there's a suction cup on your spine and that suction cup is drawing it up towards the ceiling. Take your time, inhale, and exhale. And notice your hands on the mat, really pressing into the earth. One more time. And exhale. Now curl your toes under and press yourself back, but keep your knees together and tent your fingertips again. Forehead comes down. And then walk your hands back and sit back onto your heels. So this is called broken toe pose. You can see that um, you know it's really opening up the whole bottom of the foot. And that's important. I know that um, my family, we've been walking a lot more than what we normally do. And we usually walk, but we don't walk quite as much. So it's important to give some extra love towards your feet. Send some love there. And then slowly walk yourself out again into the table. And tops of the feet down towards the mat. Walk your hands a little bit forward. So if you can see this, my, my hands are forward of my shoulders. And then walk your knees back behind your hips just a little bit. Turn your toes under again. Post your hands. My arms are straight. And then float your knees. This engages your abdominals again. Then very slowly pull your torso back towards your thighs and straighten your legs. Downward facing dog. And then walk out your dog. So bend and straighten one leg at a time. Then pull your heels down towards the mat. Rib cage to the back body, arms are straight. 
and breathe. Three or four rounds of breath here and notice how you feel. And take your time. Notice the inhalation, notice the exhalation. Simple love, gratitude, appreciation for the earth beneath your hands, your feet stable on the ground. And very slowly, walk your feet up to meet your hands at the top of your mat. So if you like your blocks for lunging and lifting, you may want to have those handy. I'll grab those and place them at the top of my mat. Okay, so we're in Tadasana now. And in your Tadasana, I want you to pull your thighs back. So again, tendency for many people is to stand forward. I want you to pull yourself back in space. And then draw your kneecaps up by firming your quadriceps. So the whole belly of my thigh, I'm pressing it back in space. And about 70% of my weight is shifted back towards my heels. My rib cage is on my body. And then I'm lifting the sternum up towards the ceiling, chin slightly back in space. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And then grab your left wrist with your right hand. And take a side bend over to the right. Inhale, come back up to center, grab your opposite wrist, and take a side bend over to the opposite side. Inhale, come back up, let's do that again. Over to the right, inhale, and over to the left. Now reach your fingers up, firm your quadriceps, hands into your hip creases, and then pull your sternum up towards the ceiling and slowly take a forward fold. So if you have your blocks, hands on your blocks, inhale, halfway lift, fold in. Let your head hang heavy here. Let gravity help you out. And if you'd like even more, you can create a little frame by grabbing the insides of your elbows with your opposite hands. And then let gravity pull the top of your head down towards the mat. Hands on your blocks, inhale, halfway lift, fold in. Right leg extends back behind for a lunge. I want to draw my left hip crease back in space and draw the back of my right leg up towards the ceiling so it's not collapsing down. Instead, I'm straightening that leg as much as I possibly can. Hands are light on the floor, or if you're using blocks, hands are light on the blocks. So stay here. Okay, and then slowly bring both of your hands to your left thigh. Sternum lifts up. And then if you feel stable here, extend the arms up towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale, hands come back down to the earth. And take a step back into high plank. So I'm posting my hands again. Press down, straighten your elbows. Elbow creases smile at each other. Thumbs move magnetized towards each other. And I'm not collapsing anywhere. So it's my belly's not hanging down. I'm not hanging in between my shoulder blades. One more breath. And then slowly press back, downward facing dog. So if you'd like to, you can walk out the dog. And this time, from your high plank, slow all the way down. 
So you can always do that on your knees. So I'll show you that on your knees. So you're here, knees down, tops of your thighs, belly, and chest. Great, hands come down by your low ribs. And the tops of my feet are firm on the floor. On an inhale, lift the chest, cobra. Exhale, come on down. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale, lift. And exhale. Curl your toes under. So here you have options again. So you can really challenge yourself here into a high push-up and then press back into downward facing dog. Or you can come up into your hands and knees and downward facing dog. So we'll all meet up in downward facing dog. Deep breath. And then slowly walk your feet very purposefully up to meet your hands at the top of your mat. Take a halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold in, hands into your hip creases, elbows point up towards the ceiling. Firm your quadriceps as you inhale, come all the way up to standing. So work with those side bends again. So inhale, arms reach up towards the ceiling. This time grab your right wrist with your left hand, reach your right arm up even more and take a side bend over to the left. Inhale, reach up, opposite hand, opposite wrist, and side bend to the opposite side. Inhale, and exhale, roll your shoulders up, back, and down. Great. Inhale, sweep your arms, hands into your hip creases, lift the sternum, firm your quadriceps, and fold forward. Hands onto the blocks or onto the mat, halfway lift, and fold in. This time the left leg goes back behind into a high lunge. So same principles here, my right hip crease, I'm gonna pull that back in space, and the back of my left knee, rather than letting it sag, I wanna straighten that. And light on the blocks or on the mat with your fingers, Lift the sternum as much as you can, breathe. And then hands onto your right thigh. So my back of my left knee has not collapsed. I'm really reaching that up towards the ceiling. And then inhale, arms extend up towards the ceiling. The crescent lunge. Reach, inhale, and exhale, hands come down. And we're stepping back again into high plank. So if high plank does not work for you, come right down to your knees. One more deep breath, high plank. Press back into downward facing dog. Roll out into high plank, and then come down to your knees, or you can do a slow push-up all the way down. Hands move down to your low ribs. Inhale into a baby cobra. Exhale, and inhale. Exhale, one more time. Maybe come up a little bit higher. Exhale. Now curl the toes under. So you can come up into a table or high push up to downward facing dog. You choose. On the next inhale, right foot steps forward in between your hands. And grab a block if you have it and place it outside of your right foot. 
If you don't have a block, your hands can be on the mat or on the ground right outside of your right foot. Okay, so from here, I'm going to tamp down the heel of my left foot. My left foot is on an angle, and I'm still bent in my right leg. So this right hand can stay on a block, and I'm in side angle. I'm pressing my right knee and the outside of my right thigh into my right arm. I'm really straightening through this left leg. My rib cage turns up towards the ceiling. And then if you'd like to, you can add that top arm. So left arm reaches up and over your left ear. And this arm is straight. Notice what happens when you break that sideline. And then from here, inhale, come all the way up to warrior two. So I'm still in about a 90 degree bend in that front leg. My torso is in the center as much as possible. So I'm not really reaching over this front leg. My torso is in the center. Arms are extended out. And then my gaze is over my right middle finger. Really reach through your fingertips. But even more importantly, because we're working on grounding and appreciating and loving the earth, notice your feet planted on the earth. So feel that sense of being grounded. One more deep breath. Now flip your front palm, left hand comes to the left thigh, and reach the right arm straight up to the ceiling. And if it feels okay for you, reach back. So reverse warrior. Inhale. And then straighten this front leg. Okay, so from here we're moving into triangle pose. I want you to take your right hand and press it into your right hip crease and press your right hip crease back as you hip bump the left hip out. So it's an action like this. So moving from my right hip crease, my left hip is bumped out. It's a hip dip. And then extend your right arm out. Now if you can find your block, maybe even turning it up to its highest setting, that would be great. So in triangle, you don't want to just collapse down and create this C-shape with the side body. You really want to make it extended. It's extended. Extended through the whole side body on the right side and the left side. Left arm can reach up towards the ceiling. Feel grounded through the legs. Breathe. And then inhale, come on up. So I want you to bend into your front leg again. And now we're going to move into half moon pose. So this block is really handy for me. You don't need one. But what half moon pose is going to look like is my right hand is going to be in front of my right foot. So I would say that it's about a foot and a half in front. Everybody's different in this pose. But I like to have a block about a foot and a half in front of my right foot. So from here, the same exact position that we were in before with side angle, but now my block moves in front of my right foot rather than outside of my right foot. Then from here, straighten your right leg and lift the left leg up. So it's good to have a gazing point. This is called a drishti and be really grounded through the right leg. My right leg is straight. And then open up. So the left arm reaches up. Flex your left foot. And breathe. Slow, bend the front leg, and come back down to the earth, warrior two. So 
and slowly straighten your front leg again. Turn all 10 toes forward. Hands into your hip creases. Inhale, lift the sternum up towards the ceiling. Be grounded through your feet and slowly fold forward for wide leg forward fold. So from here, you can have any arm variation that you'd like. I'm going to clasp my hands behind my back and let my arms fall heavy over my head. So that's one variation. But if you'd like, you can take your two piece fingers of each of your hands and grab your big toes. Elbows point up towards the ceiling and let your head hang heavy there. You could also just bring your hands directly underneath your face and pull the elbows together. And you can stay there. You can also keep your hands in your hip creases. But what I want you to notice here is how firm your feet are on the ground. This is Kasarita Kodasanasana. So this is all about your feet. Feet making contact with the earth. Now whatever your arm variation is, I want you to bring your right hand directly underneath your face, left hand to the small of your back, and straighten your right elbow. Now turn your left shoulder up towards the ceiling. Now if you feel okay there, you can add an arm. So left arm reaches up towards the ceiling for a twist. Now two feet and a hand on the mat. Simple appreciation for the ground below you. Slowly unwind from your left hand underneath your face, right hand behind your back. Straighten your left elbow. Turn your right shoulder up towards the ceiling. And then if you feel okay here, reach the right arm up. Breathe. Slowly unwind. Walk your hands forward. This is a wide leg downward facing dog. Press back through your hands. And then slowly walk your hands towards your legs and then turn your fingers to face the opposite direction and walk your hands in the opposite direction. Then turn your hands so that your fingertips are faced in the right direction. Toes turn out. And then come on up into horse pose. So my toes are out on a diagonal now. Challenging my quadriceps, still feeling really earthy here. Bring my feet on the ground. Breathe. If you'd like an arm variation here, maybe try cactus arms to challenge your balance. If you'd like, you can lift the heel and bring it down. And then lift the opposite heel and bring it down. Maybe lift both, and then bring them both down. On your inhale, reach up. It's called five-pointed star. And then hands come onto your hip creases. Okay, turn your toes. So now my right foot is turned in, and my left Toes are pointed towards the back edge of my mat. I'm actually, I'm going to grab my blocks. <clears throat> so we started with a block to the outside of our foot. So we're starting with side angle on the opposite side. So my left block or my left, the block is outside of my left foot. 
My right leg is straight. Left leg is at 90 degrees. My hand is on a block. So this side is really different for me. And I need the block to be up as high as it can possibly be. My hands are tented, so that block is just a suggestion. It's not a crutch. I'm not collapsing down into it. I'm using it to help me gain some length in my side body. And then add your arm. So the right arm reaches up and over your right ear. Inhale, come up into warrior two. So take your time, make your adjustments. And then when you're ready, gaze over your left fingertips and feel really grounded through your legs. So I'm really, really, really feeling the earth beneath my feet. It's our intention here. It is enough. And drop your right hand to your right thigh. Flip the front palm and reverse your warrior back. My elbow straight. Inhale, warrior two. And then straighten your front leg. So now we're moving into triangle pose on the opposite side. So my left hand comes into my left hip crease. I'm pressing into my hip crease. At the same time, hip dipping right hip back and creating length all through the left side of my torso and the right side of my torso. Then I'm using my block here again, left hand on that block, and then if you'd like, right arm extends up. Feel that ground beneath your feet. My quadriceps are engaged on both legs. So I'm really engaging, I'm pulling up of the kneecap on both of my legs helps with more stability. And then inhale. So from here, moving into half moon pose. So we start from our side angle position or our warrior two legs. The block moves in front. And then from here, I need a couple extras. Oh, the wall comes in really handy for me here. So the left foot is pointed straight. So if you notice if your foot is sickling in or out, see if you can make that leg straight and firm your quadricep of your standing leg, left leg. Your left hand can stay on, or your right hand can stay on your right hip. And then extend the right arm up towards the ceiling if you feel stable. I'm going to show you another great option here in a moment. One deep breath. And come on down. So what's really great with half moon pose, if you have a wall, you can do this and get really grounded against the wall and really play with this. So the wall here, I don't really even need a block, but I can press myself against the wall. So this is my right side. My right leg is straight. My left arm is extended up, and then I can really play with pressing my heel into the wall, pressing my back body into the wall, shifting my gazing point, and really opening up here through the hips. You can also do this with a chair. So I could have a chair underneath my right hand And then come on up and we can switch sides. So if you have a block, you can move it to the opposite side. Now my left leg is going to be my standing leg. My left hand comes onto the block. Right arm extends up. And then choose a gazing point. Open up. Half moon. slowly come on up. Great, one more standing pose and then we're down onto the earth. 
So our standing pose, standing balance pose today, other than half moon, is going to be tree pose. So this is in honor of Earth Day. So we'll start, we just had our left leg for balance. So I'm going to start with my right leg. So my right leg is my standing leg. And I want you to imagine that I'm growing roots through my right leg. So it's really rooted into the ground. And this leg is straight, so it's in Tadasana. So principles of Tadasana, 70%, or 75, 80% of the weight is shifting back towards the heel. So it's this heel crease part right here in between your arch and your heel. So my weight is shifted back there, firming my quadriceps so that's pulling up on my kneecap. Hands are going to be on top of my pelvic bowl, so on top of the pelvic rims. And why do I do that? I do that because I like to make sure that my hips stay level because I have a tendency to pop a hip to reach and extend out. <clears throat> so I want to keep my pelvic bowl completely neutral. So I have my right leg firm and then left knee lifts. So if you're like me, maybe you have a tendency to pop that left hip up, see if you can keep it level. And then very slowly from this very grounded position, I want you to make contact with the left foot, bottom, and your right leg. So that can be anywhere with the exception of your right knee. Now, if you like to have it in the inner thigh, that's okay. But again, make sure that you're not popping the left hip up in order to make that happen. So as long as your hips can stay level. And see, what happens to me is I start to pop my right hip out too. So I want to pull that back in towards the midline, suck everything in towards the midline in order to create the balance. Palms come to heart center. And then when you're ready, grow your branches. Inhale. Hands to heart center and slowly lower the left foot down. Let's do that opposite side. So now my left foot is growing roots into the ground. I'm really stable here. Quadricep is firm. Hands on top of my pelvic rims. And then slowly lift your right knee. Lean out to the side and make contact with your right foot it can be on your lower leg, or if you want to grab it and pull it into your upper thigh, that's fine. But again, just make sure that you're aware of what's happening with your pelvic rims. And your whole pelvis, is it tilted? Are you popping a hip? Can you find the stability? Can you feel even more rooted and grounded? Pull everything into the midline and root down through your left foot. Hands to heart center, please. And inhale, arms reach up towards the sky. Hands come back down to heart center and bring your right foot down to the mat. Great, we're gonna make our way down to the mat, back to the earth. <clears throat> we go. And I'd love for you to find your way to Dandasana. So Dandasana, also called Staff Pose, I like to do this on a blanket. I like to elevate just to be a little bit more lifted so that my pelvic bowl, again, I'm always concerned of where my pelvis is in space in a yoga practice. I don't want it to tip too far forward so that I have a curve in my spine, and I don't like to be like this either. So I find that a little bit of elevation helps me to be more upright. I can press down and then arms extend forward. So from here, I want you to take a look at your feet. So think about the principles of Tadasana that we were talking about when we were in standing mountain pose. And your feet, you want them to be in the same orientation when you're in Dandasana. So if your feet are splaying out to the side or if one's turning in and one's turning out, see if you can firmly root your heels down and then pull your pinky toe side of your foot back towards your face. 
So you're flexing through your ankles, really straight here, and then firm your quadriceps. See if you can pull up on your kneecaps here. Arms extend overhead, inhale. And then hands come to heart center. Great, so from here, we're gonna roll all the way down. So if you are in a good spot that you can do that, you might need to shift a little bit. I'm just gonna move my blanket so that it'll be under my head when I come down. So roll all the way down. If you do have a block, great to have that handy here too. So you can place that to the side. If not a block, maybe a rolled up towel, or if you have a bolster or something else that you'd like to elevate your hips with for bridge pose, just have that handy so you don't have to shift too much around. So we're gonna take our time coming down. So firm through your legs, Tadasana through both of your legs, roll yourself down. So take your time. And if you want to work with ab engagement here, awesome. So when you feel the little catch, Stay, and maybe even roll back up into it. Inhale, and then slowly come down again. Maybe this time you made it a little bit further. So this is almost a slow race. Come back up into it, inhale, and then slowly come on down. Now if your body was really ready to come down to the mat, maybe you didn't do any of that rolling at all. And that's totally fine. But once you get back down to the ground, appreciation, love, gratitude for the simplicity. I mean, how good does it feel to be on the ground again? Then bend your knees. Your knees are pointed up towards the ceiling. And your feet, as much as possible, are facing towards the front edge of your mat. So they're not on a diagonal in any way. So you might even want to take a look at your feet hard to see them, but a lot of times we have unconscious tendencies to let our feet splay out to the side or sickle in. So from here, you have options. So we're moving into a supported bridge pose. If you would prefer to do wheel, if you really want to do um, you know, regular bridge with clasped hands and you feel that that's safe for your body, you go for it. I'm going to do the supported version of bridge. So I'm using my block on its lowest setting. And then an inhale, I'm lifting my pelvis and placing the block right underneath my sacrum. So that's the flat bony part at the base of my spine. And then I let all of my weight just sink down onto that. So my butt cheeks, sorry, my bottom, are they're not on it. They're not on the block at all. They're kind of hanging over the edge. And then my feet are pressed firmly into the earth. So this should feel so very wonderful. Again, gratitude, appreciation for the simplicity of the earth today. And then if you'd like to, arms can come out into cactus or maybe palms are face down today. So face down for grounding. If you would prefer to have your palms faced up towards the ceiling, that's an act of receiving. You could even let your palms rest gently on your belly underneath your belly button, underneath your navel, and feel really grounded. So whatever makes you feel more grounded, I want you to find that position, and then open up your shoulder blades. So if your shoulder blades are really stuck together right now, soften, open them up, and then land again. And soften your jaw, soften the space around your eyes. And let your body take up space on the ground. So we will be here for three minutes. Just to really allow your whole body to sink down. to your breath awareness. Notice the gentle rise of the inhalation and fall of the exhalation. And stay exactly right where you are in your supported bridge pose. 
And if you've been playing around with wheel and with regular bridge pose, it's great. But maybe you want to take a break and come down, maybe windshield wiper the legs back and forth, and find a sense of grounding. And I have this beautiful quotation from Rachel Carson. Those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. There is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of nature. The, insur the assurance that dawn comes after night, that spring after winter. Be here now. Attitude, appreciation, and love for the earth. Five more rounds of breath in your supported bridge pose. Slowly on your next inhale, lift your pelvis and remove your block. And slowly bring your pelvis back down to the earth. And I want you to grab either your ankles or your calves, maybe your thighs, depending on your flexibility. I like to grab my feet bottoms. So this is for a happy baby. And then rock gently from side to side. And then find stillness by pulling your knees down towards the earth. Flex your feet. Slowly hug your knees into your chest. Apanasana. Feet bottoms come down to the mat. Keep your right foot grounded. And cross your left ankle on top of your right thigh. So from here, palms press down into the mat and draw your right thigh towards your chest. Then reach your hands through the window that you've created for figure four stretch. Let the shoulders soften. Flex both feet. Let your jaw soften. Right ankle crosses on top of the left thigh. Draw the left thigh towards the chest. Palms face down on the mat. And then reach your hands through the window. Clasp hands either behind the left thigh or underneath the left knee. You choose. Flex your feet. into your chest and extend both of your legs up toward the ceiling. So V for you to karate, that's what this is, legs up a wall. You can actually do this. So how I showed you with half moon at the wall, if you'd like, if you have a wall handy, you can actually move this whole thing and actually just stick your legs right up the wall. And you can stay here. So this is a really great thing to do, especially if you've been walking a lot or running a lot. And just stay there. You know, give yourself a couple minutes maybe to stay with your legs up a wall. If the backs of your legs, if your hamstrings are super tight, that might not be a great or easy thing for you to do. So if that's you, 
if you just want to stay here with your knees bent, you can circle your ankles around, maybe add some movement to the legs up a wall. And then hug your knees into your chest. Arms extend out like a T. And drop your knees over to the left, gaze over the right for a gentle supine twist. knees back up to center, and then legs over to the right, gaze over the left. You can really linger here either in Viparita Karani legs up a wall or in your twist. You can really linger at the end of your practice. It's your practice, your body. You get to choose what feels good, how much time you have. When you are ready, hug your knees into your chest, Avanasana. And it is time for Shavasana. So set yourself up, whatever feels good for your body today. So maybe you want to stay in Viparita Karani for your Shavasana. Or maybe you want to put something underneath your knees for your Shavasana today. Or cover up with a blanket or grab an eye pillow. You can get these eye pillows online. They smell like lavender and it's heavenly to have one of those over your eyes if the pressure isn't too much on your eyes. So whatever feels good for you, set yourself up for at least five minutes of Shavasana. And take your time getting there. Allow yourself to feel really heavy in your Shavasana. Notice your breath in your body. And then notice all the parts of your body that are touching the mat. The ground supporting you. The backs of your heels. Backs of your legs. Your bottom. Whole back body backs of your arms, backs of your shoulders, and the back of your head. As you close your eyes, let your eyeballs even sink heavier into their sockets. Let the bones drop of your whole body. And with each exhale, find yourself being more and more grounded. This is enough. Gratitude for the earth. Appreciation and love for grounding. As you settle into your Shavasana, I have a poem. This is from Mary Oliver, Such Singing in the Wild Branches. It was spring, and finally I heard him among the first leaves, and I saw him clutching the limb in an island of shade with its red-brown feathers, all trim and neat for the new year. First, I stood still and thought of nothing, then I began to listen, and I was filled with gladness, and that's when it happened, when I seemed to float, to be myself, a wing or a tree, and I began to understand what the bird was saying, and the sands and the glass stopped for a pure white moment while gravity sprinkled upward, like rain rising, and in fact, it became difficult to tell just what it was that was singing. It was the thrush for sure, but it seemed not a single thrush, but himself and all his brothers, and also the trees around them, as well as the gliding, long-tailed clouds in the perfectly blue sky, all, all of them, were
were singing. And of course, yes, yeah, so it seemed, so was I. Such soft and solemn and perfect music doesn't last for more than a few moments. It's one of those magical places wise people like to talk about. One of the things they say about it that is true is that once you've been there, you're there forever. Listen, everyone has a chance. Is it spring? Is it morning? Are there trees near you? And does your own soul need comforting? Quick, then open the door and fly on your heavy feet. The song may already be drifting away. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes and start to bring gentle movement back to your body. And when you're ready, hug your knees to your chest one at a time. And then gently roll to your right or your left side and pause there for a moment. And using both of your hands, press yourself up to a cross leg seated position. Eyes are closed, sit up tall. Inhale, arms overhead, palms come to touch overhead. And draw your palms down to your third eye, forehead center for right thought, to your lips for right speech, and to your heart center. May you be well, may you be peaceful, may you be happy. Namaste. Thank you all so much. Happy Earth Day. I wish you grounding, love, gratitude, appreciation for the Earth. Namaste, everyone.